Hi, I am uh, Mariana Castells, um, and today I'd like to review hot topics in non-advanced systemic mastocytosis. There is a need to assess tryptase levels in any patient who presents to any specialist with symptoms of mast cell activation and or when any patient comes to the emergency room uh, with a non-provoked anaphylactic episode with hypotension or after a severe episode of uh, hypotension induced by potentially drugs or having after reactions. It is important to assess tryptase in two settings. During an acute episode, uh, during an event of mast cell activation, and then at baseline to assess uh, if the baseline level puts the patient at risk for systemic mastocytosis. Having said that, uh, patients uh, who have uh, eight uh, and nanograms per milliliter of tryptase or above should be candidates for genotyping for hereditary alpha tryptosemia. And patients who have 20 nanograms per ml should be evaluated for potential clonal mast cell activation disorders. So tryptase levels need always to be paired, one during an acute event and one uh, at baseline. It is also very important to work uh, with uh, multidisciplinary teams. Uh, we receive uh, multiple consultations and uh, patients who have been seen by dermatology. They have presented uh, dots, and those dots likely represent cutaneous mastocytosis. They have not been checked for tryptase levels. They have not been assessed for systemic disease. We receive um, patients who have gastrointestinal symptoms, whether intermittent diarrhea, whether IBS-like symptoms that, that have been chronic and have not been addressed with any of the current medications. We receive also referrals from endocrinology, patients who fracture, and uh, they are assessed for a potential uh, uh, young patients uh, below uh, 50 who don't have a good reason uh, to fracture vertebrae uh, or other bones and who have not been evaluated for tryptase and potentially for a clonal mast cell disorder. We also have patients who present brain fog, but that in association with other symptoms make them at risk for a clonal mast cell activation disorder. So that we need uh, to have a multidisciplinary approach to mast cell activation disorders. And uh, once a patient is diagnosed with indolent systemic mastocytosis, the presentation can actually be very varied. Patients can present with venom, immunotherapy, and aphylaxis, and those patients will be referred to uh, allergy for continued immunotherapy. Patients can also be evaluated for multiple fractures. They can be evaluated by endocrinology. They will actually be placed on medication to prevent continued uh, further uh, progression of uh, fractures. Patients presented with gastrointestinal symptoms uh, will need to be evaluated by allergy, but also gastroenterology will participate. So it is critically important that uh, all the specialists help allergies and immunologists and also help potentially hematologists that carry for patients with indolent systemic mastocytosis, provide the patients with the best treatment. At the end of the day, uh, systemic mastocytosis in the indolent form is a multi-organ system disease with a very florid expression of the disease. And the current uh, clinical trials ad address one of the fundamental um, events in indolent systemic mastocytosis, which is the mutations in KIT. And the most common mutation, KIT D816V, is addressed by a lot of the current clinical trials. So potentially, a patient who did not have any options about five or, or more years ago and continue to have symptoms through the best medication can potentially be participating in a clinical trial. Please subscribe to Exchange CME YouTube channel and check back frequently for more information about systemic mastocytosis. Thank you.